to my channel. I'm your host, the Southwest Witch, and today we are going to be taking a look at the origins of one of my favorite Southwestern legends, La Leyenda de la Llorona, or The Legend of the Weeping Woman. Now, I'm super excited to tell you guys about this one because the story does get pretty crazy, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right, as always, I've got my face nice and primed and prepped, so let's get started. So if you grew up in a Hispanic family like me, or really just anywhere in the Southwest in general, I think, you've probably heard somebody at some point mention La Llorona before. I even remember learning about her in Spanish in high school, and at some point, our weeping woman became so popular that Hollywood also decided to cash in and produced a movie based around her legend in 2019 called the Curse of La Llorona. So this legend is so old that basically every region of Mexico and the American Southwest have their own slightly different versions of it. Stories of La Llorona have even been known to stretch as far out as into other parts of Central America such as El Salvador and Nicaragua. But for those of you who might not have heard of La Llorona, the basic story, at least the one I was brought up with, goes like this. So there was once this peasant woman named Maria from a small village who had fallen in love with a much wealthier man, because of course she did. And he would dote on her and he would lavish her with gifts and attention until she eventually bore him two sons. Now around this time, it's said that his affections towards her started to take a full 180 and he started picking up some nasty habits of womanizing and alcoholism and would even take off for like months at a time. It said whenever he would come home, it was only to see the boys and he would just ignore Maria completely. Now, because of this, Maria had started to actually become jealous and resentful of her own two sons. Well, one night, Maria and the boys were walking home along this path near one of the rivers. Which river? We don't know. It kind of changes depending on like the region and stuff like that. It's always just the river. So they're walking along and the husband just happens to pull up next to them in a carriage with some random fancy lady sitting with him. Supposedly he stopped to chat with the kids for a minute before taking off again without so much as a glance towards Maria the entire time, which rude. Now this apparently ended up kind of being like the straw that broke the camel's back for her because she was thrown into such a rage at this entire ordeal that she had some kind of psychotic breakdown and turned her anger towards her own boys. So the story goes that she ends up grabbing the two boys and dragging them down to the riverbank where she eventually throws them both into the river and drowns the two boys. And I guess the sight of them disappearing downstream was enough to bring her sanity back because she had suddenly realized what she had done and she takes off down the riverbank to try to save them. But of course, unfortunately, by that time she was too late. Now as the shock and the grief of what happened finally sank in, Maria was thrown into a whole new psychotic break. Yeah, go figure. And she takes off running through the streets, crying and wailing for her children. From then on, it's said that Maria was never quite right again. She mourned her sons day and night, and it's said that she had at some point stopped eating and would go out every night in her white nightgown and cry endlessly as she roamed the riverbank searching for her children. As this routine went on, she continued to refuse to eat. Her nightgown became ragged and torn from walking through the forest every night. And Maria herself continued to grow thinner and slowly withered away until she eventually just looked like this really creepy walking skeleton lady. Still a young woman, Maria eventually died on the banks of the same river where she drowned her children. And it's said that even in the afterlife, Maria's soul was so tormented by what had happened that fateful night that her restless spirit began to appear walking the banks of the river every night searching for her children. Now, there have been lots of reportings of sightings of the spirit of Maria, which eventually became known as La Llorona. And sometimes she's reported to be seen drifting between trees along the shorelines of rivers 
or sometimes even floating across the surface of the water with her white gown spread out across the water. Children were often warned not to go out late at night because it said that if she found you, she would snatch you and drown you too to try to replace the souls of her lost children. So yeah, as you can imagine, this story has been used by Hispanic parents for generations to strike fear into the hearts of their children, to make sure that they behave, lest their parents get tired of their crap and hand them over to La Llorona herself. Or at least that's what I was told as a kid. I don't know if y'all's parents were that sadistic. But yeah, sounds like a pretty solid ghost story, huh? At first thought, it wouldn't seem like there'd be much more to the story than that, right? Well, sit back down because just like the current state of my makeup, we are not done yet. Now, while like I mentioned before, there's a lot of regional variations on the story. They all usually kind of follow the same format. Scorned lady goes crazy, kills her kids, becomes a ghost, and now she cries about it all the time while snatching and killing other people's kids. But most of the retellings that I had ever come across had kind of left a lot of what I thought were pretty important details about Maria vague and never really got to the root of her story. Over time, it really got me thinking, where did this crazy crying woman's story all start? So I started to do some digging and well, let me tell you. Her story gets so much crazier than what we were told as kids, the farther you trace it, or at least crazier than what I was told as a kid. I can't speak for all of y'all. One older version of the Yorona legend that I discovered was actually set in very early colonial Mexico and has its roots mixed in with the story of La Malinche. And if you're not familiar with that story, she was an indigenous Aztec woman named Doña Marina who eventually became the lover of the famous conquistador Hernán Cortés. Now, according to this version of the story, the couple eventually had a son through their affair who they named Martín. Side note, he is also considered to be one of the very first mestizos. What up? Now, as the story goes, one day Hernán took Martín, stole him away into the night on some ship when he decided one day that he wanted to return home to Spain. And although it was against her wishes, According to the story, Doña Marina allegedly did nothing to try to stop him. And from then on, she was known to spend her nights weeping and lamenting over being abandoned by Cortes and being separated from her son. Thing is, this version of the story has a bit of controversy around it and the way Doña Marina is viewed varies depending on historical viewpoint. Supposedly, a lot of native people saw Doña Marina as a traitor to her people for falling in love with a Spaniard and helping the conquistadores communicate with and ultimately more effectively conquer her own people. Because of this, they named her La Malinche, which means traitor, and a lot of them believe that her betrayal to her people was why she ended up losing her son. She ended up becoming the symbol of La Mala Madre, or the ultimate bad mom. I mean, honestly, I can see where the native people would be coming from, but to be honest, at the same time, I really think her story is just so sad. Like, what was she supposed to do? Fight a conquistador? As if that ever turned out well for anyone. But hold on folks, because that's not the end of the story either. While Doña Marina might have become synonymous with La Llorona in some parts, it's actually because she ended up getting blended with a much older story. Like I'm talking pre-Hispanic old. Now this to me personally is the most fascinating part of the history of this legend. So we'll see what y'all think. So apparently the true origin of La Llorona is actually linked to the story of an Aztec goddess named Siwakoa. Make it a stretch? Let's take a look, shall we? The evidence. Siwakoat was said to appear one, at night, two, dressed in white, three, would walk around weeping and wailing. More specifically, she's believed to be linked to the sixth of ten omens that are said to have foretold the Aztec's conquest. What is this sixth omen, you ask? The voice of a woman heard wailing at night crying about the fate of her children. Hello? So according to the writings of a man named Friar Diego Duran, who was one of the Spanish missionaries, he reported that the Emperor Moctezuma II had become distressed 
over these dreams that he had begun having that were warning of the impending end of his reign. Around this same time, Duran had reportedly begun hearing stories from some of the native people that had been walking out at night of sightings of a woman who would emerge from Lake Texcoco and could be heard crying and wailing as she walked along its shore. Sound familiar? And he wasn't the only one to hear about these mysterious sightings from the natives either. Another missionary named Friar Bernardino de Saagún also wrote that he had been told by the native people of this weeping woman from the lake. They were said to have assured him that at night this woman could be heard weeping and at times calling out. Hijitos míos, pues ya tenemos que irnos lejos. And other times she would cry, Hijitos míos, a donde os llevaré? Now it was thoroughly believed by the natives that this was the apparition of their serpent goddess, Siwakowat, calling out to her people to warn them of the impending massacre that was soon to result from the coming of the conquistadores. Like how crazy is that? The, the story of this really powerful deity appearing to warn and save her people could get so lost in the translation of time that she became the stuff of nightmares for those same people's descendants. Like that's, that's insane to me. And honestly, kind of sad. So, uh, what do you guys think about it? Does La Llorona seem a little bit less scary now with all the added backstory? Or is she still the terrifying child snatcher haunting the rivers of your nightmares? Also, which version of La Llorona story did you guys like the best? Ancient ominous goddess or tragic mental breakdown of a woman scorned? Let me know in the comments what y'all think. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and if you enjoyed this video go ahead and leave a like and if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe for more fun spooky stories. And if any of you guys want to know what I put on my face today I will have a list of all the products in the description down below. Also keep an eye out for my other series Witchy Wednesdays for monthly videos on all things witchy. Thank you guys so much again for watching and until next time Merry Meet, Merry Part, and Merry Meet again. Haunting. Uh, ooh, oh my god. So. <laughs> glowing, 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 glowing for God. Doop, 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 doop. Hello? Hello? I can't hear. What actual cat torture? It sounds like there's a cat being tortured next door, dude. Oh, I really hope it doesn't come out in my video. You don't want to be on camera. I'm not looking like this. This is going to be in the bloopers. I hope so. This look is really cute. I really don't want to take it off. Oh my god, why am I filming this?